So we're going to finish up chapter 31, and to do that we're going to show how you can use Kirchhoff's rules to solve more complicated circuits. And so let's just go over the rules again. There's the junction rule that says the current coming in must equal the current coming out. So if this little junction right here, uh, the current coming in is I1, and that'll equal I2 plus I3, which are leaving out. So every time there's a junction, you can write down uh, an equation regarding the currents like this. Uh, here's Kirchhoff's loop law, which says that when you go around in a loop, the change in your potential must be zero. The change in your height must not change. So we make this analogy between potential and height. So if I start here and I go around, I have four potential changes. Okay, those four potential changes must add up to zero. Now, we can use a set of procedures to do this, and I pretty much do the same way that Knight does it. So your first step is label all your currents. That can be really tricky. We'll talk about that. Um, and then you label positive and negative for all the elements, and this is more a setup rule. So for the EMF for a battery, it's just a regular positive or negative that you normally have. For resistors, the current travels through a resistor from positive to negative. So if you have a resistor and the current is traveling this way through it, Okay, it'll be positive, negative, like so. And so you have the flexibility uh, to determine which way the current goes, so those signs will be independent of the person. Uh, and then what you do is you choose a loop and a direction. So find a loop and just go around it and start at the, you know, end at the same point you start from and write down the voltage drops across the resistors. And what you do is you use the first sign that you come to. So the reason we draw these signs here is that when you do your loop, you use the first sign you come to. Uh, so you write down that, and then you can usually, if, there's, if, the, if the current actually junctions out, you can write down uh, a junction rule about that too. And then at this point, uh, you sit down and do algebra to solve for your currents. So let's show how this works. So we'll start with our favorite, the simplest circuit of the world. And so here, uh, this person already said, that's a guess that the current goes in the... Uh, clockwise direction. Now here's an important part. With the currents, you don't always know what direction it's going to go in. Here you got a pretty good idea, but what you do is you just guess, and at the end your, your current will either be positive or negative, and so if you are wrong, it'll be negative. That means you just guessed wrong, and that's okay. Um, so because the current's going this way, they set up the resistor to have a positive and a negative uh, as so over here. So that's how you set up those signs, because the current's going this way through it. And the way we do this, this is how we do our loop law. You start here, you come to here, the first sign I come to is negative, so it's negative uh, epsilon, uh, negative EMF. And I go around, and here the first sign I come to is positive, and so the voltage drop across the resistor is IR. So basically your voltage drops are going to be the voltage for the battery, so the battery, the drop, will always be the EMF. And for a resistor, your voltage drop is always the current Remember, the current going through the resistor times R, times the resistance. Okay, so now I'm here, part of my loop, and I come back down to the end, only two elements, that's great. And so I solve that equal to zero, and so I can set it up as that epsilon equals IR, and then I can, at the end I can solve I equals VR. So we've done this for the simplest circuit of the world, but it's nice to, to see that it actually works with Kirchhoff's. And let's talk a little bit quickly about how these signs work. So the way this works is, so if I'm, uh, you know, uh, going through this circuit, okay, so now we're talking about me being a positive charge, okay, if I hit the battery, okay, the battery lifts me up to a higher potential, okay, so it increases my energy. So it brings me up to a higher potential, higher energy, right, because we know that the change in the potential energy for a positive charge, if it's higher potential, it's a higher energy. So this increases my energy, Okay, and then as I go over to here, basically to get from the positive end to the negative end of the battery, I do that by going through the resistor. And when I do that, okay, I'm heating up things, maybe I'm lighting a light bulb, but whatever I'm doing, I'm using up energy. And so I've used some of my potential energy uh, to do something in the resistor. Okay, and so that is how I, uh, the resistors are voltage drops. So I've gone to a, a, a smaller, my voltage went down, which means I've lost potential energy. All right, so here's an example for you. They love to put multiple batteries in, so do your steps and see if you can find the current for this circuit. All right, so hopefully you got one amp. Um, now, again, with a problem like this, uh, we don't know what's going to happen, but let's just say that the current goes this way. So I'll call it a counter, I'm sorry, clockwise current. So this would be the positive end of my resistor. That'd be the negative end. If I make that my point, 
Uh, then if I go with my loop, the first sign I come to is negative 9 volts. Okay, over here the first sign I come to is positive I times 3 ohms. Then over here the first sign is the positive, so it's positive 6 volts equals 0. And if I add these two volts together, I get I times 3 ohms minus 3 volts. Uh, and then I can put that over to the other side equals 3 volts, and then I solve for this, and so I will just be 1, uh, one amp. Okay, so here's an example they pull from the book, and uh, this one is it's a pretty good, I think, conceptual uh, picture here. So in this case, let's assume that the current goes this way, uh, again, clockwise. So that means this would be the positive end of that resistor, that'd be the negative end, and then down here, that'd be the positive end, and that'd be the negative end. If I do my loop again and start here, my equation would be negative 6 volts, uh, positive current times 4 ohms, then positive 9 volts, and then positive current times 2 ohms. And again, my loop direction is I went around this way like so. So make sure that makes sense to you. Uh, and that equals 0. Now when I add these together, so the 6 plus the the, that one, I get positive 3 volts, and then here it's I4, I2, so it'll be positive I times 6 ohms equals 0. And so if I do this, I get I6 ohms equals negative 3 volts, and my I turns out to be negative 1 half. So here's a case where we were actually wrong. And hopefully it makes sense. When you have two batteries, the two batteries are sort of battling it out. And if you think about it, the 9 volts is probably going to win. So the current actually goes the other way. But that's okay for actually solving for it. We didn't need to really know that because we got the negative answer and we know how to interpret that. But let's look at this, what this means physically to help us with this picture here. So the current is actually going counterclockwise and it's 1 half amps. And so the voltage change uh, for the 4 will be 2 volts. And the voltage change for this is 1 volt. And that's just, again, to find the voltage change. It's just the current times the resistance. And so the current really goes this way. So this is really the positive end and the positive end of that resistor. And so now we can sort of look at what happens uh, if we go around. So the book graphs this. And the book goes backwards uh, to kind of really point out what's happening here. And so it's sort of interpreting going backwards against the current. Okay, and so if it does that, if it comes through here, okay, you go through this guy, you get an increase in 6 volts. And so that's where you are right here. When you go through the, the wires, okay, there's basically no change in voltage because we assume the wires have zero resistance. And then here, since I start from the negative end and go to the positive end, I'm going backwards through the resistor. I'm going against the current. So that means there's actually an increase in the voltage there. So you gain 2 volts up to here. And then Finally, when, with the voltage of the battery, you go down 9 volts. Okay, so I'm going down 9 volts. And then finally, I increase 2 volts, I'm sorry, 1 volt with that final guy, and I'm back where I started from. So the whole idea here is this picture is that you're back where you started from. All right, and last thing, let's do uh, a little more complicated of an example. So here's a, a situation where there's more than one current. And so here's our junction. So here's the really tricky part is realizing what happens with the junction. Okay, so I'm going to say that the current, I'll call this one current I1, and I'll say current I2 is coming from over here, and then coming down here, I'll say I3. And so the equation for our junction, the way I set it up here, and again, I just totally guess, I have no idea if I'm even right, uh, I get this here. Now, it's really important, the current can only change at the junction. Okay, so it can't change anywhere else. So basically, the current all through this part of the circuit here has to be the same I1. And the current through this part of the circuit here has to be the same I2. And then I3 will be through this little middle part here. Now, if I set up my positive and negative signs, like our, the way we've been setting it up, it would go something kind of like this here. So this would be the positive and negative end. Again, remember, that this is the way you de determine your current. And that would be the positive and negative end there. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the outside loop, okay, uh, of uh, just sort of this half right here uh, of the circuit. So I'm going to do a loop all the way around through here. And so I start at this point, and I come up here, and the first thing I come to is the battery negative 3 volts. So I use the first sign I come to. 
Now I go over to here, and right here I use the first sign I come to, which is a positive. So it's a positive. Now the current in that guy is I1, and the resistance is 2 ohms. Okay, so I'm doing good. I come down, I'm going down through here, and the first thing I get to is a positive sign, and that's I3 times 4 ohms. Now I come to this battery, and I hit the battery, and that's a positive 6 volts. I hit the positive first. I'm almost there. I didn't actually write down my labels here, but it should be positive, negative. And so I come here, I hit the positive first, so it's positive I1, 2 ohms, and then finally I get back to where I started, and so I can say equals to 0. All right, so that's our first leg. Now the second leg, I'm going to go, I'm going to start down here and do sort of the second loop around through here. So why don't you, if you want, pause and try to write down that equation and see how close you come to what I get. All right, so if I start here, the first sign I come to is negative 6 volts. When I get to this resistor, it's getting a little messy in here, but it's a negative I3, 4 ohms. I'm going against the current. And I come up to here, and it's a negative I2, 2 ohms. Come down to here, and it's a positive 6 volts. And I got one resistor left, and so it's a negative I2 times 2 ohms equals 0. And so these are the, the three equations that I have. Now you can also do an equation uh, on the outside. There's a loop on the outside. But basically, that doesn't give you any more new information than what you have already. And so uh, I'm not going to do it. A and essentially, the physics is done now. Now it's just a bunch of algebra. So uh, if you want, you can stop and try to solve for these currents. Um, the currents actually come out to be uh, like so. I'll write them up here, and I'll solve them for you in the next slide uh, just to show you how it works. But here you can actually, if you want, pause and, and check yourself. Uh, but so I1 is a negative one-half amps. I2 is a one-quarter amp. And I3 is a negative one-quarter amp. All right, so here's our equations. Uh, and so right away, let's take that first, that bottom equation there, and you'll see that the positive, or negative six and the positive six volts cancel out. And so that part just goes away. And then I can add this to here. And so what I have is I have negative 4 ohms times I3, negative 4 ohms I2. And so this is really handy. Uh, I can cancel out those 4 ohms. And from this, I can get that I2 equals negative I3. So that's going to be really nice. So that's going to be nice. I'll keep that. This equation is also useful. Uh, and so now I'm going to take this guy over here and I'm going to solve that for I1. So if I rearrange that, uh, I'll get, let's see, 3 volts. So I cancel the negative 3 with part of that 6. And then I can say this guy plus that guy will be plus 4 ohms I1. And then plus 4 ohms I3 equals 0. And so I'm going to solve this. Since I have two equations with I3, I'm going to solve this for I1. Uh, and if I do that, the equation I get is something kind of like this here. And so now I'm going to plug in into my I2 into here and my I1 into here. All right. And so if I do that, I get something kind of like this. I get negative 3 volts, negative 4, I3 over 4 and then negative I3 equals I3. So it's kind of a mess, but everything in here is in determined in, in basically in units of I3. And so if I write this again, I can write this as negative 3 fourth a volt, uh, negative I3, negative I3 equals I3. And if you're still following, uh, when I'm all said and done here, I got negative three-fourths of volt. And so this is a negative two I3. If I bring it to the other side, that gets me a total of three I3. And so if I solve for this, I get I3 is negative uh, one-fourth uh, of an amp, like we were saying. And then from here, I can solve for I2. And from here, I can solve for I1. So that's pretty nasty. Uh, but again, that's a really complicated one.